Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm dealing with one of the follow-ups of my cataract surgery a couple years ago. I went from extremely nearsighted to 20-20 at distance, so now I'm adjusting to using corrective aids for detailed work. One of those aids is a pluggable USB digital microscope I've had for several years. Although the optics are fine, the physical interface is a bit clunky. But I've got some detailed electronics work to do, a 3D printer, and some ideas, so why don't you join me as I make my USB microscope easier to use? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. This time we're 3D printing. It's pretty safe, but there are still sharp knives, drilling, and sanding. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these activities, then don't. Now, let's get started. One of the benefits of being extremely nearsighted is you don't need corrective lenses to see fine detail. I just whip off my glasses and I can work on electronics projects all day with no problems. Don't get me wrong, being corrected to 20-20 vision at distance is great, but not being able to see well up close has put a bit of a damper on my detailed work. Sure, I've got the normal reading glasses and magnifying lenses, but I still can't see super fine detail like I used to. A pluggable USB digital microscope that I have had is helping quite a bit. Unfortunately, it's difficult to set up. The flexible support doesn't hold position and limits the range of the camera. So I figured I'd design my own mounting system. I wanted the mounting system to move freely up and down, lock in place, have a longer focal range, and be flexible enough to angle the camera in any direction if needed. I also wanted to use this project to gain more experience with 3D printing and FreeCAD. I decided to reuse most of the parts that came with the USB microscope. This included the camera mounting bracket and the flexible support shaft. A rack and pinion system will provide a stable and quickly adjustable support for the camera. All I have to do is learn how to make gears in FreeCAD. Making gears was a lot easier than I thought. There are a number of videos on YouTube. I just had to download the FC Gears workbench and install it. Make sure the module is the same for the rack and pinion and the gears will mesh. I chose a module of 0.078 inches with 15 teeth on the pinion and 35 teeth on the rack. With the 2 inch extension on the mounting, this gave me a rack that was about 11 inches long, which would fit diagonally on my 3D printer table. I completed the design by increasing the height and thickness of the rack and pinion. I also added a hexagonal hole to the pinion and I printed them out so I could get a feel of the accuracy of my printer. To my delight, the parts were within a couple thousandths of an inch of design. Now I can proceed with making the slide. The slide moves the camera up and down the rack while keeping the pinion meshed. In FreeCAD, I translated the pinion over one half of its pitch diameter and up five rack teeth to keep it in alignment with the rack. I verified the pitch diameter of the pinion and it was right on. I added about five thousandths of an inch clearance between the inside of the slide and the moving parts. This proved to be a little tight, so I had to sand the sides of the rack and pinion slightly to get them to move freely. After I printed the slide and fit the pinion and rack, I worked on the crank assembly. This consists of four parts, the crank, a bearing, a locking knob, and the crank handle. It's all held together with a 3-inch 1024 machine screw. The actual crank is the only part I had to print twice. I screwed up and the hex shaft was about 30 thousandths too large. I couldn't sand away that much material without compromising the shaft. I finished by designing and printing a support base for the rack. I made this a tight fit. It went together easily, but I don't think it's coming apart. I added the camera and screwed the support base to a small piece of 5 8 inch plywood I had kicking around. Now I have a lot more range between close and wide shots, a larger working area to put the projects on, and the camera doesn't keep drifting around. I think this is a win, and now I'm ready to try my hand at working with large surface mount components. Thanks for joining me today. 
This time we made an improved mounting system for my pluggable USB digital microscope. This project used about 400 grams of PLA filament and took approximately 24 hours to print. I think it compares favorably to other more expensive digital microscopes and I learned a lot too. I'll put a link in the description below to all the STL files I generated for this project. I'm looking forward to doing more detailed work and sharing it with you too. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!